It's playing the shed day again and it's a rainy summer day. If you've ever seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I'm just a backyard hobbyist and the only skills that I've got are from watching YouTube videos and making lots of mistakes. So today's project is going to stretch my skill level just a little bit more because I want to make one of these. So you're not going to learn anything technical from me, but the point of this exercise, I guess, is to show that a sad old part like me who spent most of his time working with computer software in his retirement can do something useful with his hands. And if I can do it, I reckon you can do it as well. Based on the picture, I've drawn out what I think is probably the right sort of scale. Now, the only T-slot cutter I've got is this one, and it's 6mm uh, by 16mm. So I scaled everything <laughs> to match the cutter. So the material I'm going to use is 10mm thick steel, and hopefully we'll make a success of it. And if you're watching the video, I guess it has been somewhat of a success. Now, why is it a challenge? Well, I'm going to be cutting this T-slot right through the material here. And then I've got to drill a hole for some uh, threaded rod like this. And this threaded rod is going to go into this piece and I'm going to weld the threaded rod in. So let's get into it and see what happens. I've got a bit of uh, mild steel bar stock that I'm going to use for the project. So I'm just going to cut off a length and then square it up on the mill. Now that I've got a nice clean square piece of stock, I can start laying out the pattern. I don't have a DRO, so everything I do has got to be done by eye. I've got a centre line here, and I'm just going to adjust the bed to get the point right on the centre line, and then I can drill the slot that'll end up being the T-slot. This slot's 8mm wide and I'm using an 8mm cutter to do it. And I'm taking a number of passes till I get the depth that I need. With the slot cut to depth, I can now use the T-slot cutter. Now, this is going to be a bit dodgy, I think. My mill is far from rigid and I've got to take it very slowly. But it is cutting. So I'll just be patient. Next step, I'm going to cut the square hole for the winding knob. Obviously, you can't cut a square hole. Anyway, I've marked it out. I'm going to drill right in the center, ending up with a large drill. This will remove most of the material.
I've never cut a square hole before, but I reckon that um, using this small 4mm end mill, I'm going to plunge cut on each corner. So I'm just carefully plunging down. Once I've done each corner, then I'll side mill from hole to hole, and hopefully I'll have a square with some nice rounded corners in it. Surprisingly, that went very well, and I didn't break an end mill. What a bonus! Anyway, just a final clean up with the file, and the square hole's done. Right, laying out the pattern for the jaw now, and the first thing I'm going to do is take down the sides of the jaw while I've got a complete square that I can hold in the vise. Once I've done that, then I'll cut it to fit the slot. I'm using my shed made fly cutter for this job and once I get to the line that'll just move backwards and forwards and I'll end up with a nice straight line. I'm marking out the tongue, it'll go into the slot, and I'm just going to roughly cut to get rid of most of the material, and it'll be back to the mill to finish it off. As the T-slot cutter produces a rounded end, the tongue that goes into the slot needs to be rounded as well. So far so reasonably good, but it's sort of from here that things start to go to poo. I've got a centre line there, but for some reason or other, the hole doesn't end up in the centre and I ended up going too far and cut a slot in the side too. So I'm going to continue on. I'm going to repair that little cut and hopefully everything will still be fine. Well, the cut's repaired, but that hole's not in the center of that tongue. And I'm wondering whether this is going to be a problem. So moving on, I've got a piece of 6mm um, all thread and I'm just milling it down to 4mm to fit into the tongue. And I'm just going to tack weld it to secure the threaded rod. It was right about now, I'm um, looking at this and thinking, I'm not happy with this, this isn't good enough, this isn't in the middle. Because I started with 10 mil stock, by the time I took the mill scale etc off, this was way less than 10 mil. Even though this fits fairly well, I'm going to start again.
Okay, time has passed and this is version 2 that's in the mill and I'm drilling right through both pieces. I've got both pieces together so I'll get everything aligned and hopefully I'll get that hole in the right place. And I started with 12 mil stock this time instead of 10. And I didn't like the idea of welding right on the end of that tongue so I've just put a hole in the side of it right on top of the mill down threaded rod. So welding up that hole will secure the rod. Right, well, I'm back where I restarted. We've got version 2 here. That fits pretty nice. Everything's centered. So now it's time to make the knob. And I'm going to make it out of brass, just so that it adds a little bit of bling. Just having the turning knob knurled should be absolutely enough, but I thought I'd go the extra mile and I'm putting some little divots around it just to make it extra grippy and it's an excuse to use the rotary table. So it's back to the lathe to do some chamfering and then parting off and that'll be done. Time to assemble the bits to see whether everything works. Well, that all looks good. So now it's time to draw the pattern and cut it out. And of course, every step as that promise of failure. So I can't get complacent and relaxed yet. My method of getting this shape is to roughly cut it out on the bandsaw and then use the angle grinder with the flap disc on it to finish off the shape. Well, I've certainly got a very rough shape, but hopefully the angle grinder will clean that up. Now that I've got the shape, I'm going to weld up that hole in the end. Now, 
The reason I drilled it that end is because I've only got short drills and I couldn't drill it from the other end. But a couple of minutes with the welder and then back to the grinder again and all should be fine. I can't get a smooth inside curve with the angle grinder so I'm just finishing off with the finger sander just on those inside curves there. The last step is to give everything a polish on the wire wheel. This doesn't give a mirror finish but it's pretty good. It's time to put it together for one last time. Oh, yep, okay, get it right. I'm so excited I can't hold the bits together. Now the little turny wheel feels pretty good with those divots in it. Not that I think that they were really required. The weight and smoothness of the steel feels really nice to handle. And this tool I can handle in public without embarrassment. This project has certainly tested my ability and I'm glad that I went and made version 2 because it's a lot better. OK, here it is in action. Not that I'll be using it, it's more likely to be an ornament. But still, it does work and it tightens up on the bolt head quite happily. After my success, I went back to version 1 and finished it. It works, it's nowhere near as good as version 2, and I blued it to make it look authentically like the vintage type ones. Feel free to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and a comment. It helps the channel along. Thanks for watching.